appraisal by your seniors, appraisal by your juniors, and also appraisal by your peers. So that's a 360 degree appraisal. Herein, when we talk of a 360 degree knowledge, it means having knowledge about every small minute detail about a customer. When does a customer uh, say it's a retail outlet, my customer visits? When does he visit? What is the timing uh, of visit in the afternoon, lunch hour, or say after five o'clock of after office hours? Or uh, so what is the timing? How long does he spend in the store? He just comes, picks up a few items and leaves. Or he roams around, he sees everything in the stores, gradually moves from one aisle to another and so on. He, in, he, in, uh, he interrogates and investigates the items on display. Where are the items, which are the uh, uh, particular shelves that he stops for long and so on. How does he pay? How much does he buy at a time? So how much does he spend at a time? How does he make payment, etc.? So we try to get every minute detail about a customer and we try to enlist them. We try to record them. This is a 360 degree knowledge and vision of all customers. So customer relationship management is a customer centric business approach, which entails that a business has 360 degree knowledge and vision of all its customers. Now, I, why is it necessary to uh, take have a 360 degree knowledge and vision of a customer? The basic focus is that you can serve him better even in the future. This is this is simply because emphasis has shifted from customer being a mere transaction to recognizing the life value of a customer. Customer being a mere transaction means he comes, purchases, makes payment and goes. And my relationship with the customer is over. No, they don't see it that way. Now they see the lifetime value that a customer can give us. So earlier it was that a customer comes to me, he buys a good, makes payment and he goes away. So my transaction or my uh, interaction or relationship with him is over. In recognizing the lifetime value, of, now we have shifted from seeing a customer being simply a mere transaction to uh, the lifetime value of the customer. That is, if he's my customer, even if it's a grocery store, Apna Bazaar, he comes to me. He comes, he should be coming to me forever. He should not go to fair price. He should come to me regularly. So if again, uh, there is a requirement of certain grocery items, he's to, he ought to come to my store only. So we try to recognize the lifetime value of the customer. Throughout the life, he should purchase for me. He should not deflect and go to some other customer, go to some other, uh, some other provider. So, so what we try to do, we try to get how much value I can get from this customer throughout his lifetime. That is what we mean by lifetime value of the customer. Emphasis has shifted from identifying customer as a mere transaction to recognizing the lifetime value of the customer. We try to see the lifetime value of the customer because we don't see him as a transaction anymore. Now, what is this lifetime value for customer? It means how far this customer is get me can get me business. Throughout how much business can he get me throughout my throughout his lifetime. See, I'm a, I, I have a vehicle of Maruti. Tomorrow, if I buy a vehicle, I should buy a, a, a if I want to upgrade my vehicle, I should buy a vehicle of Maruti itself, not a vehicle of any other company, not of Hyundai or a Ford. So if I want to upgrade, I should upgrade and buy a vehicle of the same company. So I try to get the present value of the future stream of income that might flow. So if I change my vehicle every five years, uh, today being 2022, I would change the ve vehicle maybe in 2027. So when I buy another vehicle uh, in 2027, I should buy a vehicle of Maruti, not a vehicle of any other, not a vehicle of Hyundai or Ford. So I try to calculate the present value of future income. Future income means in 2027, I will be buying some product. And uh, in 2027, I will be buying that product. What is its present value today? So I try to calculate how much income he'll generate for me in 2027. I bring to its present value today. You have done the present uh, concept of present value in uh, accounting, I'm sure. That's the first topic that you must have touched. So this is what we try to do. We try to garner, we try to estimate how much present value he can get for me, um, uh, how much present value he can get for me today. What is the present value 
of any future income stream that can flow. So this is what I mean by, this is what I mean by uh, lifetime value. So it's a customer centric business approach, which entails that business, any business achieving a 360 degree knowledge and vision of all customers. Emphasis has shifted from identifying customers a mere transaction to recognizing the lifetime value of a customer. Now, lifetime value for customer, what is it? It is the present value of likely future income streams generated by the individual customer. For example, I purchase a vehicle of uh, Maruti. I should not switch over to Hyundai. So it is, I should not switch over to Hyundai, but I should purchase the vehicle of this company itself. Uh, this is what I mean by lifetime value. It is based on the notion that the cost of acquiring a customer is six times more costly than retaining an existing customer. In marketing, uh, in marketing management, you must have read this, that it is very costly to get a customer. You need to interact with him. You need to persuade him. You need to convince him. And it is very difficult to get a new customer. So it is based on the notion, why should we have a CRM exercise? Why is it necessary to convert him into a loyal customer? Why is it necessary to retain the customer? It is only because uh, the cost of acquiring a customer is more costly, is six times more costly than retaining a customer. It is based on the notion that cost of acquiring a customer is six times more costly than retaining an existing customer. CRM therefore becomes a company-wide exercise and every behavioral trait of the customer is therefore becomes of great interest to the marketer. What does he buy? When does he visit my store? How often does he buy? When does, how does he make payment and so on? It allows the company to tailor and, and target the product offering to customer based on the 80 20 principle, wherein identifying the 20% of customers who give you 80% of the profit. So I repeat, basically it is based on the notion that uh, it is six times costly to get a new customer than to retain a old customer. So it's better to retain a customer, pamper him, make him feel good, make him feel important, make him, and then convert him into a loyal customer. So CRM is not an initiative of one center. It's a company-wide exercise all across. So if it's a CRM exercise in one Raymond store here, it would be another Raymond store in Delhi, another in Chennai, Hyderabad, Bombay, and so on. So CRM, therefore, is a company-wide exercise where the behavioral trait of a customer is of great interest to the marketer. It allows the company to tailor and target product offering to the customer based on the 80-20 principle. What is this 80-20 principle? It's what we call a Pareto principle, where 20% of customers give you 80% of profits. This Pareto principle has come from economics, where, yes, anybody, a uh, student from economics, can anybody say what is this Pareto principle? What does it say? Students of economics, because it emerged, it has come from there. Yes, anybody, not necessarily from economics, if anybody else knows. What is this? Uh, ma yes. Ma'am, this principle states that 80% uh, of the consequences that we have comes from the 20% 20, 20 of the causes. Uh, who are you speaking, Umar? Ma'am, Umar Mustafa. Okay, Umar, uh, yes, what is this consequence? Yes. Ma'am, uh, ma uh, I know only one thing that ma'am, 80% uh, of the consequence come from the 20% and uh, uh, I think this principle uh, was derived from the imbalance of some land ownership issue which took place in Italy. I read it somewhere there. So ma'am, mm -hmm. I'm not... Uh, very good, very good. It is in economics, we apply to, uh, we apply to wealth. You can yes, see... 80% uh, of, of, of wealth is held by 20% of people, the Ambani's, the Reliance Group, the Tata's, the 20% of the segment of the population. They hold 80% of your, uh, hold 80% of the wealth. It can be applied anywhere. In the retail center, it is the 20% of customers who give you 80% of the profits, who give you who give you 80% of the profits. Uh, even in inventory, it's 20% of the goods which make up 80% of the cost. So rest of them are minimal costs. So it is it is uh, applicable almost everywhere. 20% of the customers here in marketing, uh, in retail setup, it is 20% of customers who give you 80% of the profits. So let us focus on these 20% customers 
and try to convert them into loyal customers. So it came from a uh, principle of wealth distribution, where twenty percent of eighty percent of your wealth is hoarded by is held by twenty percent of the population. Now we apply this principle almost everywhere, almost every per where. So uh, it 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 is the eighty uh, twenty rule. <clears throat> so here. In case of uh, in case of marketing, we say it's eighty percent, twenty percent of your population, which gives you eighty percent of your profits. Eighty percent of your profits. Mm. So let us focus on this group of customers. So what do we do? We identify who is this twenty percent of the customer. We nurture them, and then we also pamper them, make them very feel very special, make them feel very good. So we identify this twenty percent of customer. <clears throat> we uh, we nurture them, and then we pamper them. We also pamper them. Why do we do so? Because the goal of any CRM exercise is to optimize customer satisfaction, optimize customer ret retention, and therefore maximize revenues and profits. An ideal CRM system would therefore provide end-to-end -end customer care, right from receipt of order to product delivery. So, right from receipt of order uh, that you've received the order till the delivery of the product, you ensure that he is happy all through. Now, CRM systems gather information from all corners of business and consolidate the information. So, if he's visiting your retail center, you consolidate information about him. You collect information about him. If he's making a query about a product, online query, you try to elicit information about the customer. He's making an inquiry about what kind of products, what kind of products. You compile that information, that data as well. So, CRM systems gather customer information. From all corners of business, and you try to create a consolidated picture of the customer. So you provide, and this information is provided to all of the organization touch points, and thereby cater to the customer that provide most profitability. <clears throat> so this is what we do. If he's made an inquiry by phone, if he's made an in, uh, inquiry online, if he's come physically to my store. So whatever information I can compile from all the three different sources, we consolidate them and we try to create a picture of the customer, what we call a 360 degree picture of the customer. Now, there are very prominent cases like of Jet Privilege case study, Kodak, General Insurance case study, <laughs> Raymond's case study and Indus Bank case study, wherein they have used CRM exercise and have been very successful. <clears throat> So we just review uh, what we have done before we proceed. We started with this. Uh, uh, what is a CRM? CRM is a customer centric approach wherein we try to get a 360 degree appraisal about the customer. 360 degree uh, uh, appraisal about the customer. Um, this is simply because we don't, do not see him anymore as a transaction. We try, we try to get the lifetime value of the customer. Now, what is lifetime value? It is the present value of what we expect uh, the income to be in the future period of time. Like we said, if a person, a customer is changing a vehicle every five year, years, and if today he has bought a vehicle of Maruti, five years later, in 2027, he should not deflect and buy a uh, product of vehicle of Hyundai, Ford, Tata Motors, but he should buy a vehicle of my same company. So I try to calculate in future, he'll be send, spending maybe 20 lakhs of rupees or 8 lakhs of rupees. What, what is the 18 lakhs of rupees five years hence worth today? What is its value today? So this is what I mean by present value of future likely future income streams. Now it is based on the notion simply because it is six times more costly to acquire a customer than to retain a customer. CRM therefore becomes a company-wide exercise where the behavioral trait of a customer is of now great interest to the marketer and allows the company to tailor and target product offering. It is based on the 80-20 principle that 20% of your customers give you 80% of the profits. 20% of the customers give you 80% of the profits. So what do we do? We identify this 20% of the customer, we nurture and then we try to pamper them. We make them feel so special that they do not deflect. So the goal of CRM is to optimize customer satisfaction, optimize customer retention, maximize revenue and profits. An IDM CRM system would provide an end-to-end -end customer care right from receipt to product delivery. Receipt to product delivery. 
uh, CRM systems gather information from all corners of the business. They consolidate the information. So I said whether it's a retail center, inquiry made by phone, on the online system. So we try to gather information uh, and create a consolidated picture of the customer. And this picture or this 360 degree appraisal, 360 degree knowledge about the customer is shared across every touch point and thereby cater to the customer that provides ma maximum pro profitability. We have very prominent case studies of Jet Privilege case study, Kodak General Insurance, uh, Indus in Bank, and also Raymond's case study. Now, what does the CRM do? The CRM software capabilities are retention and loyalty program, customer service and support program, contact and account management, Salesforce automation, and finally sales. Retention and loyalty program, customer service and support, contact and account management, Salesforce automation, and sales. Now, what is this retention and loyalty program? So this again stems from the same fact that it is six times more costly given in Kotla also mentioned in Kotla also it is six times more costly to acquire a customer than to uh, retain a customer and therefore we try to six times more costly to acquire a new customer than retain a old customer. Further a dissatisfied customer is likely to tell eight to ten people about his experience if he's unhappy He's going to share his unhappiness to about eight to 10 people. A dissatisfied customer will talk about his uh, bad experience. He will bad mouth. He will talk ill about the company. Uh, so a dissatisfied customer is likely to tell eight to 10 people about his experience. And the chances of selling to a new customer is only 15% while selling to an old customer is 50%. So another thing to note, first is he will go, he's going to bad mouth. He'll at least talk to eight to 10 people about his bad experience. And the chances of selling to a new customer is 15% only. So you can uh, sell to a new customer, chances is only 15%. While selling to an old customer is 50%. So when you get a new customer, still you are negotiating, still you're trying to assess him, still you're trying to assess his credibility. So the chances of selling to him is only 15%. While the chances of selling to an old customer is 50%. So the chances that you'll be able to sell to an old customer is 50%. So that uh, his uh, your interaction, because he already has taken products from you. If he has a good experience, there are 50% chances that it will convert into sales. So these are the other reasons. Then a customer can boost profit by 85% by increasing its annual customer retention by only 5%. So whatever program you have, whatever schemes you have to motivate your customer, to, to retain your customer, the chances you will need to spend only 5%, but you will get the chances of converting it to, into profit is 85%. So a customer can boost profit by 85% by increasing in its annual customer retention by 5% only. And further 70% of complaining customers are willing to do business again in case you're able to uh, remove his dissatisfaction. If you hear him, if you talk to him, where he's unhappy, okay, you are not happy because the serviceman didn't go to you on time. So you cater to his need. So 70% of the co complaining customers will are likely to do business with you once again if you ensure that his complaints are removed. So these are the benefits. First is, it is we invest in retention and loyalty program or retaining customer or converting them into loyal customer is very important because it is six times more. It costs six times more to acquire a new customer. Secondly, a dissatisfied customer will tell eight to 10 people about his inexperience and the chances of selling to a new customer is only five, 15% because he's, he's new to you. He has not tested you earlier. He has not, but an old customer, has already had a good experience with you. So the chances that you'll be able to sell to him is 50%. Further, a customer can boost profit by 85% by increasing it as annual customer retention by 5%. So whatever schemes you have in order to convert them into loyal customers, some gifts, some schemes that you have in mind. So only by spending 5%, the chances that you will be able to increase profits are 85%. Then 70% of complaining customers will do business again if it takes care of service 
problems only. Huh. Now, customer service support. So you gather information from various sources, create a consolidated view of customer, and make this 360-degree uh, knowledge shared across to every component, every touch point of the organization. Next is Salesforce automation. You identify the most profitable customer focused on the 20% 2080 rule, and you focus on only the 20% of the customer. So this reduce, and thus you're able to reduce cost per sale of acquiring new customer. You will reduce cost per sale for retaining old customer. And hence, it will improve your sales forecasts, territory management, team selling, and so on. So you know these customers are going to buy, buy from you because they are old customers. And therefore, you know how much business you're able to generate. And therefore, you will have better sales forecast. Therefore, you will have better territory management. You know, this group of customer in this particular location are going to buy from me. So you're going to improve your sales forecasts, territory management, and also team, team selling. Yet another benefit is contact and accounts management. Sales, marketing, and service professionals, they track service data of every past and planned contact. So what is your past contact and planned contact with the prospect customer and the existing customer? Information is captured from all touch points through mobile, fax, email, uh, website, retail store, kiosks, personal contact, one-to-one -one contact, contact, and therefore you're able to manage better. Information is stored in a common database and made available throughout the company via internet, intranet, and other network links for sales and marketing services. And the last is sales management. A company can engage in what we call cross-sell, upsell, downsell, or bundling. So these are the other facilities or benefits of uh, a CRM exercise. A company can engage in cross-sell, upsell, downsell, and bundling. Now, what is cross-sell? Cross-sell means selling an additional uh, additional product. Yes, uh, cross-sell means selling an additional product. So I came to buy a book uh, in a store, an electro say electronic item in a store. So I interact with the, cust uh, with the customer and tell him that, look, you're buying this. A similar product is also in launch. We are giving discount on this. So he, buy he came to buy one product. He ends up buying another products. If it's kitchen appliance, I went to buy a mixi. He talks, or I went to buy, a, uh, say, a microwave. He tells me there are uh, many mixi on uh, mix and grinder on the store on display which is on discount so you could just have a look so when he comes to have a look i interact with him and i convince him to buy another product so he came to buy a kitchenware uh, a kitchen item like say only a microwave he ended up buying a mixer and grinder so there are two products that he sells that he buys so this is cross selling upselling yes anybody can say what is upselling and what is downselling you can make a guess. Up sale and a down sale. I can see some names. Lavkesh Gautam, Pratiksha, Zishan Ali, Varisha Khatun, Tushar. Ma'am, upselling ma yes. up ma ma uh, is a technique in which a seller sometimes invites the customer to purchase more expensive items like we when we go to some showroom or uh, somewhere the the salesperson uh, makes us intrigued about some uh, products to buy or upgrade or some add on to generate uh, some more uh, revenue for the uh, seller any other anybody wants to attempt yes Any, any could make, make a guess. Yes, Umar is right. Upselling means I had a certain budget and I went to buy an item. And uh, the salesman convinces me, uh, ma'am, you could buy this item as well. Uh, this has additional features. So you get three more additional features, uh, just paying a little more. So that's upselling. I had a certain budget, a limited budget. And with that budget in mind, I went entered a store. But the salesman interacts with me and convinces me to buy some other product, which is a more costly item, uh, more costly item. He convinces me, ma'am, you're already spending so much. So why don't you spend a little more? You, you'll get three more additional features. You know, it could do this. It could do that. And he convinces me to buy a high, uh, costlier item. So that's upsell. And what's a downsell? 
Yes. What's a down sell? Um, down sell basically means if a customer is coming and he is not agreeing to buy a buy a, a, a costlier product, then uh, we will provide him with the cheaper product or the low graded uh, quality to uh, buy. Ah, uh, it is a. I would say it is uh, the chances of a no sale taking place. I went with a product in mind, uh, a budget in mind to a store, and I find that within the store, the items displayed do not fall in within my budget. So I will leave the store and look somewhere else. So he convinces me to buy a low version cheaper of a product, product, a simpler product, An alternate, uh, alternate. Uh. Yes, alternate product which comes at a lower cost within their budget. So the chances of no sale. Taking place does not happen. The chances of no stay, sale taking place does not happen. And what's bundling? I think you all are. Uh, we all have come across this bundling sometime or the other. All of us, and they're very um, common in uh, QSRs in quick service restaurants. You go to a McDonald or a, a KFC. They so, are sorry, yes. yes, 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 yes. Ma'am, it usually includes the combos. Huh. I think it's who was answering Sabia. Sabia, yes, ma'am. Yes, Sabia. Yes, uh, ma'am. Usually, like in electronic shops, uh, there's always uh, they make combos of things. Like for example, some hardware and softwares. True, true, true. Right. And as you give products. example of MacDs, uh, there also they uh, that is just one technique for uh, gaining more profit. As in. Um, they include like for example in mcd the french fries cold drink and a burger right so the customer get uh, more uh, attracted to such combos yeah uh, very well answered sabia i think your name is ma'am uh, sabia akil sabia akil yeah yes, you're right when you go to like i said in uh, qsr's quick service restaurants you go to mcdonald and you went to just have a burger but then they say this combo meal is there value pack meal which they say is you pay a little more, so you get a, a finger chips free, pack of finger chips free, and what's that? A, a cold drink free. So you intended to spay, spend, say, 85 to 100 rupees, but you ended up spending 135 rupees. It's just by pay, paying, say, another 30 rupees more, you get uh, french fries and you get a burger, and along with it, you get a cold drink free. So the, you, you, ended, you landed up spending more without realizing what you saw is that the combination of three products might have costed me something around 200 or 185, but I'm paying so less. So you try to see the benefit. How does the restaurant benefit? McDonald benefits by getting more, exhorting more from you. And you do not realize that. You went to spend only 85 or 100 bucks and you ended up spending, say 185, you ended up spending 130 or 150. So you're spending a uh, 35 or 50 rupees more without realizing because you're seeing the benefit that these three items would, would have costed me more than 200. So I'm actually saving. You see the savings that you've made. And a restaurant is smart enough to exhort more for you from you. So you had a limited budget in mind, but they get more benefit by they're exhorting more money from you without your realizing. So that's bundling. So you see, this is uh, it ha happens in case of electronic items also when they bundled items, likely items, you know, items where you are likely to purchase. It happens in retail centers also. They uh, they bundle items um, at large. So they try they, because they know what is the group of items that a customer purchases. So we have cross sell. So we can uh, engage in if you know a customer better. You, he becomes a better target. You're able to understand his needs better. And therefore, a co company can engage in what we call cross-sell, upsell, downsell, and bundling. So what is cross-sell? It is selling an additional product. What's an upsell? Selling an upgraded version of a product. What's a downsell? Converting a non-sale situation into a sale situation by suggesting a less expensive alternative. And bundling is, this is something which benefits both. The, the seller as well as the customer. Restaurants, we have the value meal concept or combos that she said. Uh, we have in electronic goods, hardware and software accessories, they're, uh, they're combined. Banks also do this. They get maximum benefit from the same customer by offering uh, a loan at a lower scheme. So these are the benefits of a CRM exercise.
these are the benefits of a CRM exercise. We will run through it once again. So we have the retention and loyalty program because it's uh, less costly to retain a customer because the ch uh, chances of selling to a customer, a complaining customer is 70% more if you're able to do away with his complaint, with his uh, grudge. Then uh, customer service support, it is used for customer service support where the information gathered is uh, shared across every touch point through which the customer is likely to make a purchase. It's used for Salesforce automation where we concentrate under the 20% of the customers. We study them and we can forecast that this customer is likely to purchase. So we'll end up in uh, better sales forecast, territory management, and also team selling, contacts and account management. So information is captured and from all touch points. And lastly, uh, we have sales. A company can sell, can engage in cross-sell, upsell, downsell, and bundling. I think we can, uh, yes, cross-sell, upsell, and bundling. So we just review. We talked about disjointed information, which should not exist in an organization. And it is done away with cross-functional enterprise systems. One is ERP, CRM, and supply chain management systems. Today, we took up customer relationship management system, which is a customer-centric approach, which believes in having a 360 degree knowledge and vision of the customer. Why? Because customers no more transaction. He is a, he's no more a transaction, but he is a, uh, we try to, he uh, see him as a lifetime customer. And we try to find the present value of future income streams that might flow from this customer. And why is it necessary? Because uh, getting a new customer is more difficult than retaining an old customer. It's more difficult to get a new customer than to retain an existing customer. So uh, this is based on, and also it is based on the 20%, 80% rule, where we focus on the 20% of the customer. We try to identify such customer. We try to nurture them and pamper them. So the goal is to optimize customer satisfaction, optimize customer retention, and optimize customer re retention and maximize revenue. Then uh, we have very prominent case studies. Raymond case study is also very prominent. And CRM capabilities are retention and loyalty program that we discussed, customer service and support, contact and accounts management, sales force automation, and also sales. We'll carry on from here on Monday's class. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes, yes. Ma'am, I have a question. Uh, for example, uh, if I'm having a showroom and I'm providing uh, some sort of free services to the customers, so it will be with the goal of uh, retaining these uh, customers, right? Yes, yes, yes. So that's okay. why I said you spend 5%. I think somewhere it is mentioned. Uh, you spend only 5%, but you gain 85%. A customer can boost profits by 85%. By increasing its annual customer retention by 5%. So any kind of retention program. So you just spend 5% on a retention program. But the chances that you can convert it into profits is 85%. The chances. So any kind of scheme that is open. Like you see, Maruti always have a free service scheme for one week, you know. And uh, they set up centers. So that's, that's a part of CRM exercise. That's a part of CRM exercise. Yes, any okay. other questions? Okay, thank you, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Aslam. Yes, beyond Anam, Mohammed, Farhan, Fatima, uh, Sabhiya, Saskeen, any other query before we wind up? No, ma'am. Thank you. No, ma'am. Ma I have a doubt. Can I ask? Yes, Ahmed Said. No, who is it? I'm Farhan. Ha, Farhan. Mohammed Farhan, yes. Ma'am, how are we supposed to uh, do these case studies? Do we have to, how can we study this? See, there are two approaches to case study. A case study is basically a situation. And uh, in a case study, there are basically two parties. Uh, like, for instance, a case of um, a case study in which you have Ratan Tata on one side and Cyrus Mystery on the other. There are two parties, right? So you would be taking a uh, side of any one party and saying, oh, okay, he was right and he was wrong, right? So that is one way. When there are two parties to a case, that makes an ideal case study. That's an ideal case. So case is nothing, but it's a situation when there are two diverse parties with two different set of uh, views, right? So that's a case study. So we answer a case study. We analyze a case study based on uh, based on who's, whom do we see as a person who's right, right? 
Now, many a time, the case studies that we give are um, illustration of facts, which we call uh, narrative case studies. Narrative case studies means uh, they are those um, which is not a case, which is actually a case study. There are two different things. One is a case where there are two parties, like you talked about um, uh, Ratan Tata on one side and Saris Mystery on another, where there are two parties. There are many case studies, like um, a case study by um, this cafe. See, or for which he committed suicide. So that's a case study. That's not a case. There's a simple person about what happened in his life we describe. Okay. So you, you could get certain case studies and not a case wherein it is a narrative of a situation which has taken place. There we analyze was it right for him to do or what approach he should have adopted. So when many a time it's an open case which does not have a question, but many a time it has a question. So we simply answer the questions. But whenever we answer the questions, we try to give a brief of the uh, the company or the situation that is talked about and we focus on the w's what when where so what happens so we say that um, uh, we say that on such and such date um, cyrus mustri was removed so we say what happened when it happened where it happened okay we mentioned the companies we the what when where uh, why it happened we give a brief of the case in say five lines and then we answer the query and there is no correct answer to a case so your opinion could be that you take uh, you feel cyrus mystery was right my opinion could be that ratan tata was right it's so there is no subjective correct answer, to answer we only have to ensure uh, that is a, it's a realistic solution and we give reasoning why we say so that fetches you marks and what else fetches his oh. marks is you link it to what you have studied the concepts you have studied Always try to link it to the concepts you've studied. Try to use the right words. Okay. Try to use, uh, it's a situation of, say, retail center. Try to use the word of, like, cross-sell, upsell. So if you can link it to what you've studied in the class, the concepts you study in your class, uh, you fetch more marks. I think you're talking from that point of view. And second, you always try to link it to the concepts. You also uh, try to give a reasoning. For whatever you say, there has to be a reasoning why you say so. You might be wrong. But then you have to defend your case. That is it. Okay, we'll take up a situation, uh, okay, a small case study, and discuss in the class. Very soon, I'm uh, compiling ten. Uh, I'm compiling case studies, so it will be given for presentation to different groups. And you'll be marked on it. Maybe uh, subsequent classes, maybe the following weekend, I would be distributing them to you. I will be uh, sending them to you, but asking you the group names, and then I'll send. I'll try to give a different case study to each group so that there is more exposure. Can we wind up today? Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.